friend of mine, a fiber buddy. This is my friend, felting farmer Lady Lee. Hi, Lee. Hi, Joyce. How are you doing? I'm doing good. good. And we are fiber buddies, as I said. And Lee kind of started off as a little bit of a student of mine. Um, I taught her some things, and then she kind of went off and took off with her imagination and started doing all kinds of really cool things on her own. So now she has a Facebook page, Etsy store, um, all kinds of stuff. She makes beautiful gnomes, trees, pixies, um, some really, really creative things. So I'm really excited about just how she's progressed and evolved as an artist. It's just a testimony of how needle felting can take your imagination to all kinds of really cool places. Uh, we do some projects together, and last year we made these really cool Christmas trees. And today we're gonna show you how to make these really cool Christmas trees for yourself. We got the idea from a book that Lee has. And it's a really cool book from this lady in Scandinavia. She's really, I guess, famous in the felting world. Yep. Uh, her name is Birgit Hansen, and she does all sorts of gorgeous critters. And she specializes in pixies and wild forest creatures. And in the back here, she had some beautiful fir trees. And that's kind of what gave us our first inspiration. And we've kind of progressed from that and, and created our own way to make them. So today we're going to show you how we make them. Um, we use some core wool, which is what you'll need. And got some different core wool here in roving form. We also use some locks. These are some really pretty green locks so that you can get that whole Christmas tree, fir tree mm -hmm. look. And maybe some recycled sweater. And definitely you'll need your felting needles. Like this is a double needle and that will be a really good, either double or a triple needle would be really good to use on these projects. So let's get started felting. So we're going to start to make the core of our Christmas tree and you should gather your core wool and this can be kind of anything that you have lying around. Sometimes people buy core wool specifically to use as core. It can also be called like crafting wool or wool batting and in a pinch you can use a recycled sweater which I will show you how to do in a second. But first Lee is going to show us how that she wraps her cores. Um, this is a little different than the book, which um, has its own way of doing them, and this is just how we do them. So, so I just take the roving, or what I, it depends on what kind of core wool I have, of course. So I'm going to take it and just make it kind of the height I want, and squish it together with my hands, and then that gives it a, a center post to work on, and then I start wrapping really tightly all the way up. So it gets narrower at the top. And then I'm going to go back down again once I get to the top. And of course, I want it thicker at the bottom So, because I, I want a nice, good, solid base. So I'm going to make it thicker at the bottom. And at this stage, it's, it's the ugly stage. So don't worry about it because it's all going to get covered and you can mold it later. So let's say a little bit more maybe at the bottom. Okay, now here's the hard part. <laughs> I take my, some yarn and then go around the bottom at the base. I don't know if you can see it. And then I'm just going to tie it and secure it. And I hope this yarn shows up so you can see. And then I'm going to wrap it just kind of in a spiral all the way up to hold the core together. And then I'm going to cross over and come back down the other side. That's really creative. I really like that. And it gives you a good base to work on. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have a little tag at the bottom, that same oh, where yeah. I tied it. And there we go. So then I cut it off. And the important thing now is to make sure that you have a nice flat surface at the bottom, because otherwise your tree's not going to stand up. So now is when I take my three-pronged needle and I really make the bottom dense. And I make it flat. And I make sure that we have a good solid foundation at the bottom. It will take more than that. But, and then I would also kind of neaten up the top. And then it is ready for locks. Wow, that's really good. And you can kind of get a feel for how dense you want them. You want them to be able to stand up on their own. 
You want the, so you want the base really flat and you want to wrap it really tightly when you're wrapping it. Um, now, if I was going to, I made this one, which is kind of like Lee's, but what I did is I used a piece of recycled sweater in mine. So here's my piece of recycled sweater. And I've talked about the sweaters before, like this one is an old, look at that. It's got little moth holes in it. It was obviously got shrunk and stuff, but instead of throwing these away, these come really valuable in when you're crafting and doing things. So. I'm just going to cut a kind of a strip of sweater with my scissors. I did wash this one. Um, I probably bought it and it was sh it was shrank shrank yep. in the wash, and then I actually washed it again just to make sure it that it was really up. really mm -hmm. firm. Yeah. So what I would do with this is if to make a tree is I would first roll it like this just so that you have kind of a, a good solid base. And then I wrapped it with my core wool around and kind of made the top narrower felting as I went. And then I wrapped it with yarn. So it's kind of a similar way to do it. Another way that I like to do them is to do them in a triangle, in a cone. And some people, you know, if you're handy with the sewing machine, you can actually take this kind of like a cone shape and you could sew um, on your sewing machine or just stitch by hand into this cone shape. But if you could, didn't do that, what you could do is roll it into the cone shape like this. And then what I would do with this is stuff the core wool up into here. Mm, to give it its firmness. To give it its firmness and yeah. shape. So because this is wool, when you apply the locks to here, this um, sticks the, you can needle felt into the sweater felt. So, um, and an example of one of those that are finished or at least sewn is this one right here. It's kind of a, it's got some locks on the other side, but you can see how I just hand stitch this and it's got um, a nice flat circular base of sweater felt. And it's very nice and cone shaped. So for my bigger trees, I like to do it with the sweater felt. Um, but now we're going to show you how to apply the locks next. Okay, so we've made the core and now it's time to apply the locks or our fur to our fir tree. Um, Lee came up with that earlier. I hadn't even thought of it yet. So, <laughs> so it was kind of funny. But um, anyway, so we're going to take your... Um, Christmas tree core. These are a nice size, I think, because they give you kind of like a nice height. You can make these in any size, really. You can make really little ones. You could. I've had so. I have some really big ones that I'll be showing you later. And you and know, I think they look best in a group of two or three. They do. And so you have a tall one and a short one. You'll and maybe want. A you'll wide want one. to make a lot of them yeah. once you once you start making them. You'll want to make a lot of them. So as you can see, we have a bunch. <laughs> we have, we made a bunch last year. So. Um, what you're going to do is you have select your locks. Now these are locks that I dyed. I went through and I cleaned the, I cleaned the wool and then I dyed the dyed it these colors. And so I, I've kind of separated them as I go. Sometimes your locks will be kind of stuck together. Hopefully you're if you're ordering locks either from me or from another supplier, they're nice and clean and stuff. But if you have a problem with the ends being kind of felted together, you can take like a little tool like this. Um, or a flicker. This is um, this is a cleaning tool, but technically there there's other tools that are called flickers. But basically they're like little tiny pet brushes, and you could open the ends of your lock just by brushing it and making it a little fluffy. And that way, when you needle felt your locks into your core, um, it'll your needle will go through better. I think it'll you know, grab better. It'll yeah. grab better. Yeah. Okay, so let's apply a couple of locks. Um, Lee, do you want to show how you start to apply your locks and then sure. we'll talk about the, um, I'll kind of follow along, follow you and we'll follow along with the overhead okay. cam. I usually like to cover the bottom first because that way I don't entangle the locks that hang down at the end while I put it on. So I just take a few of the color that I'm going to be using, put them on my little carding blending brushes and or 
carding pet brushes. Pet brushes, yeah. <laughs> and then I card them, and I get it just a little bit fluffy, and fluff goes all over. And there we go. And then I apply that to the bottom. And it makes just a nice, where's my deal? There we go. Color at the bottom. It's nice to kind of hold it flat while you start. And I get it kind of tacked down. And then I put it down onto my felting surface so that I don't end up stabbing my hand. Yes, nobody likes that. No. These are. This is a little bit, um, when you're working with bigger three-dimensional objects, it's kind of, um, it, it can be a little bit tricky if you haven't used that before. So I'm doing the same thing here with mine. I just kind of fluffed mine by hand. So you can, if you don't have little tiny uh, slicker brushes, you can always do these by hand. Sure, just pull apart the um, We're also using multi-tools. Like this is my huge uh, multi-tool right here. And Lee has a triple one. So it just makes your work go faster. And, and I think that if you're working on a bigger, bigger project like these Christmas tree ones, you can be a little bit frustrating if you're um, working with a single working needle. Working with a single needle yeah. will drive you crazy. So. so that's firm enough now, and we can, we can work on it again later. All right, well, okay. we're going to apply the locks now. And if you look right here, you can follow along as we go. You want to find the tip end. This is the, t the end of the fleece that's away from the animal versus the part that was connected to the animal where they sheared it. So you want the sheared end at the top and the curl end at the bottom. I like to straighten them out a little bit. And I like to keep mine intact. I'm not a fluffy kind of person, so I always keep them intact. Joyce likes to fluff. Yeah, I'm a fluffer. Yeah. <laughs> so I leave a little tail because I like the way it kind of drapes when you stand it up. And then I pull it kind of up as far as it's going to go. And then I kind of hold it in place with my hands. Now, is that going to work? Can I go into here just for two sure. seconds? Yeah, All I'm, right. I'm not even sure if that's on. I think it is. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> and I kind of tack it in, and I hold it as I go. Because if I just stab in the middle, it starts curling oh, yeah, up, yeah. and it doesn't keep the, 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 it doesn't cover the distance that I want it to. So I get it tacked down, and then I continue on from there and get another lock and right. Go do you like ahead. to go up and down or do you go around the side? I like to go around. Me too. Yeah. So I do the circumference once, and then I go to the next layer. Yeah. So there's several ways that you can do the locks. And you can do them so that they're whoops, um, so that they're like really close together. You want them to be, um, you don't want a lot of space showing because you don't want your core to show. And then you can always come back and kind of fill in the gaps with your uh, with some extra little yeah. little locks if you get kind of away from you. And sometimes it's fun to get them all tacked down and then go over it again. I usually take my double tool when I all together mm -hmm. and then do an, a once over again just to make it look striate, more striated. Well, that's it. All right. So we're going to show you a couple of other ways to apply locks now. Okay, so I'm working on this uh, really big Christmas tree, and I've added part of my um, lock layer, and we've kind of left a little bit of a skirt so that when you stand it up, the um, the locks will kind of form this nice little little um, drape over here. But then we've come to apply the second layer of locks. Um, the second layer is you want to felt just over here like so you apply it on top of the first one and kind of you can kind of measure it with your hands and if you look right here you'll see how I'm gonna felt it most of the way down but I'm gonna leave like and you can also see like oh well that one it would be better down here because it's that size so I'm gonna grab a different slightly shorter lock you can also kind of trim off the tops if you get if you need to kind of um, shorten them up a little bit 
definitely trim from the top down rather than these really nice curls. You don't want to destroy those at the at the end. So I'm just going to felt the very third of this up into here. Working on this larger one, you don't really need a felting pad, but of course we should always be aware that where your other hand is, because I'm kind of supporting it with here, and you could like go through and kind of poke yourself if you weren't careful. And that's bad because then you get blood all over your wool. Yeah, you don't want to bleed on the wool. Yeah. So we've got one tier right here, and you can see how you could go up to another tier or even a, a fourth tier. So I grab my other one here. I think that if I was doing this on my own, I like to do the whole all the way around and then do all the way around and then do all the way around. But for demonstration purposes, kind of like showing you what the results would look like. As you get up towards the top, Lee pointed out that you want to kind of make sure that these are, what did you say, scrunch them up so that they don't kind of wiggle, um, kind yeah, of worm I their way out. I kind of made an example here. This kind of looks a little funny. Do you want to push? Sure. Push over your there. There you go. But when I get to the top now, I leave a little bit of fuzz hanging off the end because I don't want my tree to look like a cone head. And so what I do then Oh, you bring them all I together them at all the tip. Together I see. At the tip. That's very clever. So it looks more wispy, like a rather than having tree. like a rounded top. Yeah. Right. At first we did it that way, and Excellent. then I decided I, know, I just I like don't that. like conehead trees. Yeah. You know, I did that with an owl the yesterday. I like. So this will. Yeah. You can see the flavor of it, but you have to work on it some more. But then it has a nice little wisp, and you get it narrow, and you can see that more so on the trees behind us in the. Yeah. So, so anyway, that's oh, what I do. You can have your pad back. Yeah, sorry about that. That's all right. So you can also apply your locks in a different variation. Um, here's one that I started where I intentionally did like the spiral. And part of this was because my I had these really long, beautiful um, tease water locks. This is a special breed of sheep um, that grow just really super long locks. So this is all from one, well, this is all from one kind of sheep, Wensleydale or Teeswater, and it's really, really long. It's like, what is that, like 12 inches about almost? 12 inches compared to yeah. this is mohair, and they usually don't let them grow too much longer than about six inches. That's probably about a year and a half's worth of growth, whereas this is just a year. And on this one, I actually started from the top down because I was having, or maybe I started from the middle. Now I can't remember where I started. but. I think if I had to readjust a little bit because I kept, um, I wanted to spiral it even more. So, and if you were, if you were doing this and you were having trouble like applying your locks, you could always lift up your locks just real gently and then reposition them. So you, you can remember that you can kind of reposition things and kind of move them if you're not happy with where they are. Yeah, that's another good reason just to tack things down until you're done. Yeah. And then do the final finishing the at the end. A finishing poking or felting yeah. with the needle. So, and I'm kind of like going back in to, um, you go over this one a lot when you do the spiral kind. So I'm kind of seeing where I need to go. I'm going to kind of lift that one up and move it a little bit over there. Put that one right there. So when you're applying the locks, you can apply them spiral, you can apply them in tiers, or you can apply them like straight up and down. So there's lots of different variations on which way to go with them. Whatever your imagination wants. Exactly, and you can have a beautiful Christmas decoration. Now that you've finished um, putting the locks on your Christmas tree, then it's obviously time to decorate your tree because what it wouldn't be Christmas without, without decorating your Christmas tree. Right. So uh, some of the ideas that we have for decorating your tree are with this one, and also obviously I did this one in, in just all white locks, so you don't have to be limited to green. Right. You could do all, any kind of color you wanted. 
um, with the little decorations here, these are some that I found at a craft store in their like miniature decoration department. And I just took like a straight pin and let me see if some of the times these won't come out as easily. Aha, this one. So I just took a little straight pin and I kind of wound it into the floral wire that was here. Oh, that's a good idea. And then I just pushed it, put a little dab of glue on the end and it won't come off and just push it all the way into your tree. Now, you could also take old necklaces mm -hmm. or... Um, or earrings. You have straight earrings. A lot of people have just one earring because they've lost their partner. I'm always losing my I earrings. Know. Yeah, it's a problem. I lose them in the barn. There we go. So you can just decorate your tree with a variety of earrings. Joyce can put hers on too. I'll put my earrings on there here you go. too. So I think this would make a really fun gift for like a teacher or a mom or you know pretty much anybody because this would be a lot of fun to do. Mm -hmm. I have this nice string of um, some brass bells and you could just wind it on. Yeah, like a garland. It's very pretty. You could also just use them as like woodland trees. I have, there's some angel buttons because you can find all kinds of little novelty things mm -hmm. um, or even old Mardi Gras kind of necklaces and stuff. I think that people will have a lot of fun decorating their trees. I think they will too. I think they will too. And I want to thank Lee for decorating trees with me today and showing people how to how to make their own Christmas it's a trees. It's pleasure to be here. And her Etsy store is Felting Farmer Lady, and she makes all kinds of really cool things. And have a merry, very merry holiday. And, and don't forget, Joyce, you have a kit. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. If you, we do have <laughs> kits. Last year we made up kits and we sold them. And those are available in my Etsy store called Gypsy Heart. So you can see the link below for the kits and enjoy decorating and making Christmas trees. Happy holidays. For more adventures in needle felting, please like and subscribe to our channel. And for kits and supplies, check out the link to my Etsy store below. Thanks for watching.